Peace and blessings, brothers and sisters. A word from the Most High. I was reading the book, the first book of Peter, which I've read before multiple times. And I just want to share one of the revelations that the Spirit gave me. We're in 1 Peter chapter 4. We're also going to be in the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden. We're going to be reading the third book of Hermes. The also called the Similitudes, chapter 9. We will also be in the book of Nicodemus. These books are found in the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden. I am also in the Sefer, also known as the Bible, in the first book of Peter. I'm going to read out of the first book of Peter, supported with the third book of Hermes, also called Similitudes, chapter 9, and the book of Nicodemus which is in the Lost Books of the Bible, the Forgotten Books of Eden. All right, I'm going to start 1 Peter, starting at, in the fourth chapter, starting at verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 6. For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Again, for this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live to God in the spirit. All right, now, what does that mean? We're going to go back. We're still in First Peter. We're going to go to chapter 3, verse 19. This is talking about Yeshua, Jesus, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which was sometime, which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved. So, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19, talking about Jesus when Jesus was crucified, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, we're going to go to verse 18. For Christ also have once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Quickened, given life, quickened by the Spirit. All right? Now, remember Death only has power over those who have sinned. Yeshua, Jesus, had no sin. So, we're going to read. He went, by which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Okay? Now, those that were in prison were those who had died. Those who had died. All right? When you read in the book of Nicodemus, Yeshua went down into the world of the dead. Those who had lived before the flood and he was preaching the word to them. Why? Because when you read in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, it says, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. We know that the last thing before God puts things back to their original order, is the judgment. Well, everyone, God wanted his word to be preached to everyone. So nobody could say they were not given an opportunity. And that word of God is Yeshua HaMashiach. You have to remember they're one and the same. The word and Jesus are the same. If you say you love Jesus Christ, then that means you love his word, the word of God. What word? God's word. When you read in the book of Revelations, chapter 19, Jesus Christ is also called the word of God. So when people say, I love Jesus, you're saying, I love the word of God. Well, many of those people had not heard the word. They had not listened. They had not been given an opportunity. And remember, his word would go out through all the world, all creations. 
that all men be given an opportunity to be saved. God doesn't want so much as one of us to be lost. And just to show the power and the glory of his love. When Yahshua went into the grave for three days, he didn't go down as most dead men go. He went down a living spirit. And he spoke to those that were in prison. What prison? The prison of death. How do we know he can speak to the dead and talk to their spirits? How do we know this to be true? Because when Lazarus died and he spoke to Lazarus, he called his spirit back to the world of the living. Okay, Yeshua has power over life and death. Life and death. Okay, so he went to preach to the spirits in prison. In prison by what? In prison by death. In prison by lack of faith. In prison by lack of knowledge. Many of us right now, brothers and sisters, God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Okay, we suffer for lack of knowledge. For lack of vision. Okay. Yeshua, God in his greatness. Yah in his glory and his power. He sent his word into the world of the dead. When we read, or with better spoken, when we hear in the book of Isaiah, now I'm reading in the lost books of the Bible. I'm in the book of Nicodemus, okay? As a matter of fact, I'm in chapter 16, starting at the ninth verse. After this, another prophet, namely Holy Isaiah spake in like manner to all the saints. Did not I rightly prophesy to you what when I was alive on earth that the dead men shall live and they shall rise again who are in their graves and they shall rejoice who are in earth for the dew which is from the Lord shall bring deliverance to them. Shall bring deliverance to them. Okay. And I said in another place, O death, where is thy victory? O death, where is thy sting? When all the saints heard these things spoken by Isaiah, they said to the prince of hell, Open now thy gates and take thine iron bars and take away thy iron bars, for thou wilt now be bound and have no power. When you hear the verse, lift up your heads, O ye gates, be ye lifted up. Ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors. Those gates of iron, those bars of brass, they're talking about death. They're talking about that power that no mortal man can win over. That no mortal man can beat. That many people are imprisoned by their... Some people are imprisoned by the fear of death. By the fear of judgment. So Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. He conquered death. He took power over death. Again, all we have to do... We look at the widow's son. We look at the little girl. The daughter. A 12-year-old who was dead. He called her back. We know the power of God. God's word raises the dead. We know the power of God's word raises the dead. Okay. And who is that? That's Jesus Christ. A lot of people look at Jesus as a man who spoke words and the words of God. But what you have to understand, he is the word of God. Whether we see him with our physical eyes or not. Those in those blessed days when they walk with him and talk with him in the flesh, they could see Yeshua. But in the spirit, we walk with him and talk with him because he walks with us. He talks with us. Uh, matter of fact, his words say, seek me now while I may be found. All right. He intended that none of us should be lost so much so. Again, we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 19. By which he also went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometimes were disobedient, when once the long-suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the, earth, while the ark was a preparing. All right, now I'm going to go to chapter 4, verse 6, still in 1 Peter. 
For this cause was the gospel preached also to them that are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the spirit. Okay. When you read the book of Nicodemus in the lost books of the Bible, it speaks about Yeshua going down into hell. Okay. And taking power. Then the king of glory trampling upon death seized the prince of hell, deprived him of all his power, and took our earthly father Adam with him to his glory. All right. Now, where they thought they were going to have power, they lost power. There's another thing I wanted to speak of real quick that's written in uh, the book, First Peter. Okay, wait a minute. First Peter, I believe I'm still in chapter 4. It's a short piece, but the Spirit was giving me revelations, and I wanted to share it with you. All right, now all of a sudden it tries to get away from me. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Um, ba ba ba. Bear with Okay, chapter 2. All right, now, First Peter chapter 2. Starting at the fourth verse. To whom coming as unto a living stone. Who are they talking about? They're talking about Jesus. Disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house. And holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. We're in first... Peter chapter 2 verse 5. Ye also as living stones are built up a spiritual house. A spiritual house. When you go into the lost books of the Bible. And the forgotten books of Eden. You go to the third book of Hermes. Also called Similitude starting at chapter 9. It is talking about the spiritual tower is talking about the spiritual tower. I was going to quote it out of the book, but I'm just going to tell you the books and give it to you as the spirit was giving it to me. Okay. We are called living stones, lively stones. Okay. Who is the cornerstone? Who is the cornerstone? That rock of ages, that rock of ages. That's Yeshua HaMashiach, the word of God. He was here at the beginning of creation. Before any creature lived, we had Yeshua HaMashiach. Okay. God said, and then there was. His word went out, and then there was. So we know Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, was here in the beginning and before his word. His word was here before any living creature came into being. How do we know that Jesus is the word of God? Because we go into the book of Revelations chapter 19 and it tells you that. Although it tells you that throughout the Bible, I'm just giving you one spot to find it. You can call him the word of God. You're talking about Jesus. When you say, I believe in Jesus, you're saying, I believe his word. What word? The word of God. Okay. We are built, we are lively stones, okay? The chief cornerstone, they call it the rock of ages, the rock of ages, because it is the oldest foundation stone. It supports the entire world. The, the, the church, the body of the Most High is built upon the rock of ages, the rock of ages being Yeshua HaMashiach, okay? Again, when you read, the book, third book of Hermes, also called the Similitudes. In the lost book of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden, you will see what that tower is about. Okay. And you have to have spiritual giftings. You have to have taken on the spirit of the most high in order to enter into that tower. As a matter of fact, there is, the tower is not sitting upon the earth. The tower is built upon that old ancient rock of ages. But in order to get to the tower, you have to go through a gate. It is a new gate. 
Who is that gate? The gate also is the word of God, Jesus Christ. Okay, you cannot enter in any other way. You cannot enter into the realm of God. You cannot enter into the tower of God. You cannot enter into the city of God unless you go through that new gate. It was sent in the last times, in the last generation. For us, that is when Yeshua walked among men. He gave the Basura, the Basura being the good news of the Most High God. Okay, grace and mercy unto us who believe. Um, destruction to the wicked who reject him. But you must go through that gate. You cannot enter in any other way but through the gate. In the gate is Yeshua HaMashiach. In order to get through the gate, the Spirit of the Most High God must be upon you, brothers and sisters. That lively tower, we are those lively stones that help build that tower up. And we fit so perfectly together. You can't discern one stone from the other. It ends up looking like one smooth building. How do we know that? Because we have one mind, one faith, one heart, one spirit, one Lord. That's how we know. When you read the lost books of the Bible, the forgotten books of Eden, and you read the book of Hermes, the third book of Hermes, starting at the ninth chapter, but I would suggest... Read it from the beginning, brothers and sisters. You will get line upon line, precept upon precept. You will get line upon line, precept upon precept. We are living stones. We are going to go into, through that new gate that's built upon that rock of ages. What is that rock of ages? It's the word of God, Yeshua HaMashiach. We're going through that new gate. And we're going to be those lively stones put into the tower. What dwells within the tower? The Holy Spirit. Who is Lord over the tower? Yeshua HaMashiach. Brothers and sisters, I just wanted to share this revelation with you. I've had it multiple times. Um, also about him going into the world of the dead. You need to read the book of Nicodemus, which is also in the lost books of the Bible. But we know he has power over the dead. We know that because he called back Lazarus. And the so Satan and his so-called minions could not detain him because the word of God is all-powerful, almighty, everlasting. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not one jot, one tittle of his word shall be removed. Okay? You be blessed. You be enlightened. Peace. Shalom.